and happy Easter and welcome to Kirsty Does Stuff, part three of making a baby blanket quilt. Now this week we're going to be hopefully nearly finishing off the quilt. We have made our top that you would have seen last week and now we're going to put the padding, the batting behind it and the backing as well which is a different piece of material all in one and I think I've chosen the one that I want to use um, but you can come along with me see how we're going to do that we're then going to pin it all together and then we're going to quilt it on the machine and now I've never sent a quilt away to be quilted you can do that there's lots of lovely companies that do that for you you pick a design and they quilt it for you you get it back and then you do your binding and any finishing off and um, i'd like to do that one time and see how it works but i just tend to quilt them myself on my machine um with a walking foot or with a free motion quilting foot and uh i i've always I'm experimenting a bit more now than I used to, but um, I, you know, sometimes do something simple, sometimes do something a bit more elaborate. We'll, you know, see what the pa what the pattern and what the project asks for. Really, you don't want to do too much if it doesn't require it. So, right, first things first, we're gonna cut our pieces to size that we need, and I'll see if I've got enough in my stash <laughs> to do this job. That's lovely, let's go. Now I'll put the link below of the stuff I like to use. Um, I forgot what it's called, Warm and Natural, I think. And I get it from Amazon. Now, if we look at this bit here, it's certainly long enough. But widthwise, it's, I don't know if we get away with it. You're meant to have about four inches all the way around of extra, just in case when you um, quilt it together, it can sometimes shrink in a little bit. So you need that little bit extra. Now, huh. I don't know if this is going to be, this would be winging it somewhat. It's a little bit extra over. Mm. See, it's not much, it's quite tight either side, but I think I'm gonna give it a go. Just as long as there's some extra either side. Right, so make sure it's at least four inches over, and then we'll put it up. And then at the bottom, we're going to have, so we'll take that way around, two, three, four, three, four. It's quite a joy to work on a smaller quilt because the last couple I've done have been quite enormous and the logistics of moving them around has been the main issue, you know. It's been the main problem. So we'll just cut this bit. Now, we need to do the same with the backing that I'm going to use, the backing material. I thought this would be fun. I bought it ages ago when I saw it and I thought, I'm going to use that on something. It's so gorgeous. Um, and I think this might be the perfect project because it's fun. It's not too babyish. Uh, and it's not babyish at all, really, this side. It's just very jungle adventure. And uh, I've got loads of it, so let's use it. Right, so you can see this material oh, has salvage along this side. Along this edge, you see it easier on the back, I think. And on the other side as well, exactly the same. So we're going to try and avoid that a little bit. But since this is the material sort of excess anyway, that uh, is going to go around the quilt. It may not even be in the quilt. It's just sort of like a comfort blanket in case I mess up in some way. Right, there we go. Right, put it right down the bottom. There we go. That's perfect. 
clean that up there. And cut up this side. Okay, so we've got our three layers lying down. Now we do have a small issue in the way that the side, you're meant to have four inches of your wadding material or your batting and four inches of your back, background material, your back material if you like, around the quilt. So you've got plenty of room for any errors when you're quilting. It sometimes makes your material shrink a little bit. So that would take up that. But as it stands, as you can see, can you see over here, you've got very little margin for error. There we go, with the wadding over here. Hmm. I might just take a gamble. It's very much a do as I say, not as I do kind of situation. Uh, because you shouldn't, you know, leave yourself with that little room for error, margin for error. I'll try and put it in as centrally as I can. That one's not got much room on that side now. I've done it before, to be honest. And uh, if you're running low on certain materials and, and this kind of wadding I order in off the internet, and it's not cheap, it's lovely, it's cotton. And... Um, it's just lovely to use, and that's why I use it. But uh, yeah, it's not cheap, so. Once you're sure you've got your quilt just where you want it, you pin it in place to keep it there. And basically, in these little blocks of four, I would do one pin in the middle of each block. Uh, and that should keep it secure. I might do every second block, actually. Hmm. Just what you think with your own quilt design, what would keep it secure. to decide how we're going to quilt it um, and I'm still not sure <laughs> I've got a feeling I might like to do some swirls some free motion swirls on it um, which might be quite a nice idea might be quite a nice thing to do with this kind of thing you'd normally just probably stitch in the ditch which means um, sewing into the already sewn seam lines and that can give you a really neat result and it keeps everything together. But I feel a bit swirly today, so we'll see. <laughs> see how we go. Three main foots could be used for this kind of quilting. If you're going to do straightforward quilting, it's not too thick. Um, you're not doing anything special. You could use a walking foot. Now, walking feet are mainly for sewing through several layers of material at the same time. It just gives you a bit more, a bit more leverage, I suppose, when you're sewing through different layers of material and quite thick, like the wadding or the batting can be. So that's a handy foot to have um, for joining any kinds of material that might be a bit thicker. This is. Uh, a free motion quilting foot, um, also known as a darning foot sometimes. So you can see there's, you know, your needle goes in and out of this part here. Can you see it? Uh, so it's up like that. The needle goes in and out there. And when it goes down, 
it doesn't crush your material completely or go down flat in your material completely because you couldn't move your material underneath it so it's just a little bit of a gentler sort of bit on your material so you can still move your material around freely underneath but not so much it's going to wrinkle up it's going to stay nice and flat so that's i've got three different free motion fits and that's one of them or if we were going to stitch in the ditch, we could use this foot. Now, it looks like a normal foot, but it, this black bit here forms a little trench underneath, a little divider. So that goes through your seam, opening it up so you can stitch into it. Very handy thing to have. Uh, still not decided what I'm going to do. <laughs>